Então, o compêndio da Lexia Divina é uma forma simples, prática e acessível de ter na tua mão o resumo de toda a oração de um ano litúrgico. Com esse livro, você não vai perder a tua oração. Você vai registrar dia após dia o conteúdo da tua oração. E a oração vai se transformar em vida, vai se transformar em decisões, em práticas concretas. Essa palavra é tão poderosa que um só versículo pode mudar toda a sua vida. E o que é a Lexio Divina? A Lexio Divina, como o nome diz, é uma leitura orante da Palavra de Deus. Cinco passos, muito simples, e a leitura é algo objetivo. O que é que esses textos falam hoje, concretamente? Lê com calma, lê tranquilamente, lê várias vezes essas três leituras. Depois da leitura você tem a meditação. Então a meditação é um movimento de entrar dentro de nós, onde Deus habita, no mais profundo de nós, e escutar o que é que Deus quer me falar a mim, naquilo que eu vivo hoje, com essa palavra. A graça da oração. Se Deus me fala, eu respondo. Uma pessoa que ama, responde à pessoa amada. E o quarto passo, a contemplação, que transpassa o teu coração e, e, e torna o teu dia todo diferente. E essa palavra deve ficar ruminando no nosso coração ao longo de todo o dia. E último passo, a resolução. Qual a decisão que eu tomo face a essa palavra? Na escuta do verbo. Hello everyone, I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from Seeds of the Word Community and I would like to welcome all of you there joining us this Monday, November 22nd in the 34th week in Ordinary Time. We are in the very last week of Ordinary Time on this year. And today the church celebrates Saint Cecilia. Legend claims that a Roman woman named Cecilia was martyred for the faith sometime in the 2nd or 3rd century a few days after her husband, Valerian, and his brother, Tiburtius, were beheaded for refusing to sacrifice to the gods. Her association with music, she is a patron saint of musicians, seems from the story that, that at her wedding feast, she sang to God in her heart. Honored since the early years of the church, Cecilia is mentioned in the list of saints in the first Eucharistic prayer. So today, let, let us pray for all the Cecilias that we know, and also for all the musicians asking Saint Cecilia to pray and intercede for them, that they may honor God through music. And for the reading of uh, this day, we will read Prophet Daniel, Prophet Daniel chapter 1, verses 1 to 6, then we go to verses 8 to 20. Responsorial Psalm today is a canticle, a responsorial canticle. It's from Daniel 3, the third chapter of the prophet Daniel. And the gospel is from St. Luke chapter 21, verses 1 to 4. Let's start the reading of the Word of God. In the third year of the reign of King Jehoiakim of Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. The Lord let King Jehoiakim of Judah fall into his power, as well as, as some of the vessels of the house of God. This he brought to the land of Shinar and placed the vessels in the treasury of his gods. Then the king commanded his palace master Ashpenaz to bring some of the Israelites of the royal family and of the nobility, young men without physical defect and handsome, versed in every branch of wisdom, and endowed with knowledge and insight, and compete to serve in the king's palace. They were to be taught the literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of the royal rations of food and wine. They were to be educated for three years, so that at the end of that time they could be stationed in the king's court. Among them were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, 
and Azariah from the tribe of Judah. But Daniel resolved, resolved that he would not defile himself with the royal rations of food and wine. So he asked the palace master to allow him not to defile himself. Now God allowed Daniel to receive favor and compassion from the palace master. The palace master said to Daniel, I am afraid of my lord the king. He has appointed your food and your drink in your drink. And should see you in poorer condition than the other young men of your own age, you would endanger my head with the king. Then Daniel asked the guard whom the palace master had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Please test your servants for ten days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. You can then compare our appearance with the appearance of the young men who eat the royal rations and deal with your servants according to what you observe. So he agreed to this proposal and tested them for ten days. At the end of ten days, it was observed that they appeared better and fatter than all the young men who had been eating the royal rations. So the guard continued to with, withdraw their royal rations and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and skill in every aspect of literature and wisdom. Daniel also had insight into all visions and dreams. At the end of the time that the king had said for them to be trained, the palace master brought them into the presence of Nebuchadnezzar, and the king spoke with them. And among them all, no one was found to compare with Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore, they were stationed in the king's court in every matter of, matter of wisdom and understanding concerning which the king inquired of them. He found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This reading of this Monday tell us is talking about the beginning of the book of Daniel. How an Israelite man and young men, we see here four young men, was stationed, were stationed in the palace of the king. In the very beginning, it says that uh, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, besieged Jerusalem and he, he overtook it. So he took some vessels and he profaned those vessels. The vessels that were used to worship God was now in Nebuchadnezzar's temple, palace, to worship his gods. So was here the king Nebuchadnezzar who besieged, who, who won over Jerusalem, was profaning the vessels of the house of God. And then we skip some verses to see how Daniel got into the palace of the king. We will see in the next days how Daniel uh, interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dreams, how Daniel was there to help the people of God. So here is the beginning. How are they placed in the palace of the king? And we can bring to our own lives saying, how many times God introduces to, a, to an environment that is not Christian, that is not feeding to our faith, but for what? For us to be able to help others. Look in your life, where you work, where you study, where you, with your friends, with your families. How many times you look around and say, what am I doing here? It, it, it maybe was God who placed you there for you to be able to be a witness to them. Sometimes it might not be with words, but be a witness with your own presence and with your faith. Never, never doubt God's work. And He wants to make us His instrument to go whatever He wants us to be. The canticle today, Daniel 3, says, Blessed are you, O Lord God of our ancestors, and, and to be praised and highly exalted forever. And blessed is your glorious holy name, and to be highly praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, 
and to be extolled and high, highly glorified forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths and to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom and to be extolled and highly exalted forever. And the gospel today from St. Luke chapter 21 verses 1 to 4 says, Jesus looked up and saw rich people putting their gifts into the treasury. He also saw a poor widow putting two small copper coins. He said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for all of them had contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in, has put in all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, we see the Gospel of this widow, this poor widow that gave everything she had to live. If I'm not mistaken, last week or a couple of weeks ago, we heard the same Gospel birthed through Mark in Mark's vision uh, of this account of the Gospel. And today we hear St. Luke, this widow that had very little to live and she gave everything she had to live on. She gave in the treasury of the temple. It means she was giving to the Lord, to God, everything she had. And God knew it. God knew it. God, God saw it. Jesus is showing us here that we should not keep for ourselves what we have. Our own lives, everything that is most precious for us or that we feel that we only have so little. Give it to Him. Give it to the Lord. Give it to Christ. Give it to the one who need. And the Lord will, will re recompense you. He will reward you. Amen.